New Art Guys, and it's Ben here with episode one of the MK Don's chat. Now this is going to be a hopefully a weekly series that I bring that will just be me chatting here about what's been going on about MK Don's. Hopefully, be getting some comments from you guys, anything on in the YouTube or Twitter, and then bring that in, just talking about everywhere because it's the club I support and I feel passionate about it. And for starters, it's a great week to start. It's been a very busy week. Now we're starting off with the appointment of. Dan Michichi, 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 I think that's how you say it, don't quote me on that, but yeah, um, it's an interesting one, when, we'll, we'll come to Robbie Nielsen sacking, but when I saw he got the sack, I was up in Wales, I wasn't in Milton Keynes, I was in Wales seeing family, what was why there was no football traveller last weekend, um, wanted to go watch one there, got busy with family, didn't have the chance, but very well. Um, yeah, so it was a bit of, I want to say it was a shock after last last week's, um, not even performance, because I weren't there to quote on the performance, but the result. It, it was a big game, that, and the result let us down. Um, yeah, when, I, when he got the sack, there was two people I had in my head. First one was Simon Grayson. I think he's done it before League One. He's gone up a couple of times with different teams. The one I can remember is he went up with Preston. The year Dons went up to the Championship, he managed to get Preston up in the playoffs after we nicked them on the last day. But he, from what I read, he didn't want it. He didn't want to go. What was understandable up to him. We're in a club in the relegation zone and we need the battle. He didn't want it. Second choice to me was Eddie Rubio. The Spanish manager, who is the manager of our under-18s, under-under-23s, has done wonders this season. Now, I know we're only talking under-18 players, under-23 players. But what he's done has been very well for the club. He's given them people the chance to prove themselves and be able to progress with the club and go forward. Um, they were my two options. I saw a few other names around. I think, is it Alan Stubbs? I think his name is. The ex Rotherham and Hibernian manager. Um, I didn't want him. I didn't want. I'll be brutal. I didn't want another Scottish manager. We've just done that. He brought a load of Scottish players in. It didn't all work out. I think we had to try something different. What I'm happy with, and we'll move on from it. So then, yeah, it was down to him. I still can't say his surname, so we'll go with Dan. Dan. He was here. I think it was ten years ago. Since the appointments come out, it's been known as he was the manager of the under-18s and the head of coaching of the academy when Dali Ali come through. So, that's come out and it's promising. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I want to see what happens. Um, his first job in His first job as a manager, as a first-team manager. So, it's going to be difficult, but he knows the club. Um... I think we need someone who knew the club. Could hope to bring some stability to the club. Exciting football. Give the youth players an opportunity. Um, but yeah, I think it'll go either way. Like most things done. It's like Nielsen. It went alright second half last season. Hasn't really got anywhere this season. So he had to go. But yeah. Um, Dan Michichi we'll start with. Um that's what I'm going to say the surname is until I hear different. But yeah, it's an interesting appointment, guys. And um, we'll see We'll see where it goes, really. Um, I'm not getting too ahead, but yeah. We'll, we'll just see what happens. Now we move on to the departure of Robbie Nielsen. And not only Robert Nielsen, but some of his staff members in Stevie Crawford, the assistant manager, and Neil McFarlane, who I believe was... First team coach, but that's what also known as. I can't actually remember his role, but yeah, it was. Um, I, th I think it was time for Robbie to go. Personally, I thought if we lost the Peterborough game, he would have gone then. Start of the um, transfer window, I thought he would have gone. But that Peterborough game, I think, saved him. The passion that was shown in the win and the situation, the scenario of the game. I think it did save him and it gave him that bit of extra time. But I'm not shocked it has happened. I think after a defeat to Northampton, a draw to Wimbledon, a loss to Oxford, and then a, a win against Peterborough and a win against QPR. But 
you're looking at four of them games, they're, they're rivalries in a way. Peterborough, Oxford, due to how close we are to them, along with Northampton, very close to them, and then Wimbledon, the history. And if you look, you only get four points out of the four games, is, isn't good enough. So I think that might be why he went. He did all right in the January transfer window coming up to it. He brought in Ike Yugbo, the young striker from Chelsea. He was on loan at Barnsley for the first half of the season. Um, got got a couple of goals here and there. Didn't really add nothing crazy. But from what I remember watching him in the QPR game, he was lively. He had to think about him. And then the second one he brought in was Marcus Tavernier, who I rate highly. Watching him at Middlesbrough, I remember a game watching live on Sky Sports. Can't remember the game it was now, but he started and he was lively. And obviously with Tony Pulis coming there, he might not be he might not be fitting in. So he's come to the Dons and hopefully he can play some good football. But yeah, I think it was time for Nilsson to go. He he's had a year. Can't really say we've progressed much further. But yeah. Nilsson's gone and we move on from it as a club the next bit of news is um, Dean Lewington with the arrival of Dan Machici and Keith Millen as his assistant Dean Lewington's going to become player coach I'm very happy with this personally it's what I wanted to happen in the summer just gone I was shocked we gave him a two year playing deal it shocked me but I'm happy to see him first like First, I'm happy to see him back at the club. He's Mr. MK Dons in a way. He's a great player for us over the previous 10 to 12 years. I think he's been it. All right, he's not in his prime anymore. He, has, he hasn't got it like he used to have it. Um, I think in the odd games here and there, he'll be able to come in and do a job. But the left-back position, I don't think he can make it his. But I'm very happy to see him part of the club. I think it was... It was a, Shame to see him be moved out of the club. And he was meant to be going out on loan if Nilsson was still here. And say he'd gone out on loan and started January, then Nilsson got sacked. What would have happened? So, but now I'm happy to see Lewington back at the club. He's a, a big character for us. So it's good to have him around. Obviously, Keith Millen brought in as well. Um, Yeah, he's got Premier League experience. He, I remember he did a couple of caretaker games, I believe, for Crystal Palace. He's been in and around that atmosphere. It's positive. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure on the appointment of everything, so I won't go into too much detail, but I think it, it can be promising. Now we go on to another statement that has been said during the week from um, Dan and his team, that players will be getting the opportunity to show themselves before signings has been made. Now, on the day of recording this, it's the 26th of January. It'll be uploaded on this day as well. If I'm correct, the transfer window closes on the 31st of January. That leaves us the Coventry game only to players to show something until we need to get something in. Um, I think we need players in. Don't get me wrong. Maybe not as many offensively, offensively, but defensively especially. You're looking at our centre-backs now. All we have is Wooten and Ebanks Landell. Alright, fair enough, Williams and Lewington can fill in. Now if you look at the fullbacks, all we've got is Callum Britton, George Williams and Dean Lewington. That's a total of five defenders. Now if you look into the, the youth team, you've got Oren Jackson. Maybe he gives him a bit of a go. From what I've seen, I've not been fully impressed with him, but he's a young kid. Maybe it's worth a go. David Kasumu played a few games at right back. He should pre he's just signed a pro contract not that long ago. But if we're looking at potential players to stay in that first team, we've got five defenders. All right, we lost Goldborn, one due to the loan expiring and out for the season. That's a big loss. He, he impressed me. And Walsh also is one who... He didn't he didn't play much at the start of the season. I think Nilsson preferred Wharton and Ebanks Landell. But Walsh really impressed me, especially the QPR game I can remember. He put himself on the line. He really impressed that. And losing for the season, it's a big loss, don't get me wrong. So, I think we need to bring in bring in the left-back, at least one, and maybe a centre-back as well. And then that can maybe be our defence become a bit more solid. You then look at maybe a centre midfielder who needs to come in. Uh, obviously, I can't think of any names off the top of my head, but I think we need a centre midfielder, an out-and-out centre midfielder. 
Um, you can do a bit of both. And then wingers, we've got a few more options in there. Strikers, we've got more options if they get a chance. So yeah, I think off offensively, we're looking much stronger than we are defensively. So that needs to change in January, hopefully. And hopefully Dan and his team can get a few players in. I've also seen Paul Mitchell, the ex-Tottenham scout, I believe. And he, I think he was at the club before. Apparently he's been involved a bit more. It was good to see. Um, now we move on to the team news for commentary on Saturday. Um, it's a big game, this. I don't, I don't really know what way it's going to go. Um, I'm wanting us to win. I think we need the win because a bit of extra money and get through in the cup. Um, hopefully get a big team in, in the next round. I'm not saying commentary aren't a big team, but the, the Premier League teams want one of them. Um, but yeah, team news. Two players are out. Chuck Sinike, who got sent off against Northampton. I'm going to move straight on from that. I think there's been obviously a few words said. Chuck's lost his head. Everyone does it here and there. And he's out for three games. It's a big loss, but we'll move on. And then while she's out for the season, they're the only two absences officially unknown. Obviously, there might be a few players who are on um, match fitness tests and see if they can feature and play. But, yeah, we're only missing them too. I'd like to see players like, like Nesbitt. I want to see him back. He had a good stage where he really impressed. I remember the first game he properly played and influenced was Plymouth away. It's one that I went to. Um, a long long travel day, that one was um, very tiring. But, yeah, he really influenced in that. And ever since then, he started to offer a bit more. Then he got his injury and he's dropped out. I want to see him in. Few of the youngsters, Sam Nombe, Brandon Thomas Asante. Can they get a game? Usman So, who has probably let everyone down this season. It hasn't been what we wanted him to be, but then from what I read in the Northampton game, he looked up for it. He got the assist for Gilby's goal. He looked like he wanted it a bit more. I don't know if that was because under Nielsen or what, but hopefully we can see some action from him. But yeah, um a brief lineup, I'd go Nichols. Britton, Wharton, Ebanks and Williams as your back four. If he plays a back four, we don't know what he's going to do. Um, I'd go a two in midfield of McGrandles and Oos. Two that will sit. McGrandles go up and down. Oos will like to control the ball. I'd have Gilby just in front. I think Alex Gilby's been the best player so far this season. On the wings, I'd look... If they're fit... I'd probably look to go Nesbitt and Tavernier, if possible. I, d I don't know if they're fit or what, but I'd look to go for that. And up top, I'd probably go Ugbo. I don't know what's happened in training this week, so it's, uh, if anyone's impressed him. But Sal, I don't know. I just don't know about him. And Ryan Seager, I'd love to see be given more chances after Dan. Under Dan, sorry. I think he really impressed at the start of the season and he offered that little bit. He's like a poacher. And if we can get the ball in behind the fence and around, I remember the goal, oh, it might have been against Rochdale. We won 3-2, I remember. And Oost played the ball over the top. Seager got in behind and finished it. A very nice finish to win the game 3-2. I'd like to see him give a chance. But yeah, that'd be the 11 I'd go for. Now we move on to the more... Um, the future of the club. Um, there's been some contract extensions this season. I just want to go through them. Um, so far, we've had Nichols and Walsh earlier in the season. Two players that I want to see at the club still. I think they should stick around. Um, then, quite recently, we've had Callum Britton. who, When he first came in, I remember the game at Oxford. My words were, why have we brought him on? And I'll happily admit, I eat my words about that. He scored in that game and he's been very well since. He obviously got that injury. What was a bit of a setback and he slowly got back to himself, getting involved in the in the team. And yeah, I think we needed to get a contract extension with him or he'd go to a championship club easily, I reckon. They'd look to progress him and that. But yeah, good to have a contract extension there. And then on the day of recording this, Brandon Thomas Asante just signed a new one and a half year deal. Very happy with this. When he first came into the team last season, I was impressed 
really liked him. He offered to give that bit of excitement to the team. Um, so I'm happy with that. And then we've had two um, two players turn pro so far this season. We've had David Kasumu, who really impressed me in a Czech trade trophy game, I remember. He played right back, looked very good in that game. And we've had Dylan Asanji, a young striker who's only a first-year scholar. Um, was attracting the interest of West Ham, Arsenal, Manchester United. Don't know where that come from, but yeah, so we signed him up and we'll see what he can offer in the future. So um, after that, guys, now we're moving to my Saturday prediction. I've written two things down here. I've gone for a hope and a think. I honestly hope in a bit more optimistic it'll be a 2-1. I think we should have enough to beat them. But then they beat Stoke at their place, so and um, from what I've read, they're bringing over eight thousand. So it'll be a tricky one, but I, f I think guys, I've got my heart set on a two-two here. I think it'll be a two-two, and we'll have a replay back at their place. What I think I'll be unable to go to, but yeah, I think that's what it'll be, guys. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up here, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this chat. I do want to add this more podcast the aspect to the to the channel i love i love talking about football passionate about football i was just watching um talk norwich city the youtube channel um they just released now a podcast just sat there and listened to it i thought it was very interesting so i want to try and add that aspect i still have the football travelers going up a lot of don's games coming up might be going definitely going to the country game tomorrow and then away to walsall next weekend i'm looking at going to as well but yeah, hope you all enjoyed this, guys. Leave your comments in the section in the comment section down below of um, your opinions on what I've said or your opinions about the club. I'm really interested to hear and any comments I'm looking to bring forward to next week's uh, chat. But yeah, guys, if you can hit the subscribe and like button as well, that'd be a bonus. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.